Hope you're not down by the pier! Through the Woods is a bit of a mixed bag. Developed by antagonists, this Norwegian horror game can certainly have its great moments. <laughs> but then there's so much of this time in between these moments when you're doing nothing exciting at all. Most of the game you play as a mother searching the woods for her son. Meanwhile, you get tangled up in tales from Norse mythology, which is a nice idea, especially with Norse being the in thing at the moment. It's a story-driven experience as you learn, not only about ancient legends, but also about the strange relationship between a mother and son. Hey mom, wake up. Wake up, you've been asleep all day. On the surface, the woods look great with some great looking scenes. The water looks a bit weird, but other than that, visually the game's fine. The problem is that this is a world that doesn't feel alive. I mean, look at this, this bird. It's not even reacting to me. Does it even see me? Look, I've got my face right up into it and it's not even flying away or doing anything. It's like you're walking around in a hologram where you can look at things but can't touch or interact with anything. You can't even climb a ladder. In fact, the developers had to make a ramp so you can get up into the treehouse. I mean, what kind of... Tr <sighs> yeah, what kind of treehouse has a ramp up to it? Even opening gates is done by just walking into them. It's like your character isn't actually there and isn't a real human being. I mean it, Espen. Come out. <laughs> Jesus, Espen. What are you doing? This happened to me quite a lot, actually, where something spooky would happen, but because I had control of the camera, I was looking the wrong way and completely missed what was going on. Can I go down to the pier in the morning? I want to try catch some crabs. I want to try catch some crabs. I will say the sound design and the music is excellent. In fact, the sound effects do the best job of bringing this world to life. I was actually shocked a few times at how good some of the little details were, like the sound of flies buzzing around, old wood cabins creaking, the main character sniffing, and the noises that some of the creatures in the game make really show how to use audio effectively to create a spooky atmosphere. There's no big Hollywood-style stings when something scary happens, it just happens, out of nowhere. You hear the growling or the screeching of the various enemies as they come towards you, and yes, you can die in the game. There's no combat, so don't even bother. The voice acting is... okay. There's a few dodgy lines, but for the most part, the mum sounds realistic enough, given the circumstances. And it's nice that you can play the whole game in Norwegian. <laughs> Things take place over the course of a night, so you get to see times like sunset, dawn, and of course, the pitch black of midnight. But hey, you're given a flashlight, so seeing shouldn't be a problem, right? The flashlight kind of sucks. Is too small, so often you only get to see a tiny circle of the screen. I wish it would brighten up a bit more area. Oh, like that, like the torch does, which you only get for a brief period. Now, being lost in the woods in real life must be a pretty scary thing, but in a game it would be very easy to make it feel boring. But here it does a genuinely good job of making you feel disorientated, and throw in the odd troll which you desperately run away from to end up god knows where, and you feel like you're lost in the woods. You can wander around for five minutes thinking that you're making progress, only to end up at the same place again. And it only happens in an early stage of the game, but there's a part of the woods where I just can't get any sense of my surroundings or direction. I was even tempted to try and navigate using the moon, and without a map and no advice or hints or tips. Oh gee, thanks game. Really? You're really gonna tell me the same thing you've told me ten times in the last hour now when I actually need a good piece of advice? Getting lost leaves you confused and slightly frustrated, but in a good way. In a way that you should feel if this actually happened. The only problem with it is that without knowing if you're making any progress or simply running around in circles, you don't really care if you die or not. Any threat that the troll had is long gone when you know that dying will load the game up in essentially the same spot. Why is there a lightsaber on the floor? The game eventually gets much more linear, involving running from one thing to see or do to the next. It can at times have a great atmosphere, and again, with those great sound effects and music, it makes the whole experience much more engaging. It only takes around three hours to complete, but it does have some replayability in that it's got tons of stuff to find off the beaten track, so it's worth playing again and searching every nook and cranny. Plus, it's got a great twist ending. 
I've definitely played a lot worse. As always, thanks for watching.